Hi, thanks for joining us. Welcome to Children Wisconsin's ongoing live and Q&A series. My name is Dustin, and today I'll be leading a discussion about mental and behavior health and the importance of focusing on it during this unconventional back to school season. Here at Children's Wisconsin, we recently launched our Shine Through campaign this month as part of our effort to bring awareness to address the mental and behavior health issues of kids in Wisconsin. You can learn more about it by visiting shinethrough.childrenswi.org. Today I'm joined with two members of our team at Children's Wisconsin who have a great deal of expertise and passion in this space. Joining me are Dr. Jenny Walzak, the Clinical Director of Mental and Behavior Health, and Shauna Sullivan, our Child and Family Counseling Training Supervisor. Today we'll be taking a particular focus on mental and behavior health as it relates to the idea of kids heading back to school in the coming weeks, along with a broader view of the issues Wisconsin kids are struggling with today. Back to school means a lot of things for a lot of different people, and we understand that it's changing by the day, sometimes even by the hour. So our intent to this conversation is to focus on kids' mental and behavior health in a way that is relevant to whether their individual to whatever their individual back to school situation is, be it going back in person, mm -hmm. virtual learning, or a hybrid of the two. We we'll also want to acknowledge the impact of COVID-19 in the current environment on adults, parents, faculty, staff, and more. But we want to remind you that we're focusing today on kids, and our experts joining us are specialists in the field of children's mental and behavior health. We also invite you to ask your own questions in the comments. For those that are commenting while we're live, we'll do our best to answer your questions towards the end of this broadcast. Uh, but even if you've missed this broadcast live, we still encourage you to leave your questions in the comments as we'll be answering them after they appear. Uh, Dr. Walzak and Shauna, thank you again so much for joining us today. Can we start by having you both introdu introduce yourselves and explain your roles on the children's team? Sure, thank you for having us. My name is Jenny Walzak, and I am the Clinical Director of Mental and Behavioral Health, as well as a psychologist at Children's Wisconsin. Part of my role at Children's Wisconsin is to serve as the clinical lead on some of our mental and behavioral health initiatives that we're working to help improve early access, um, early detection of mental health issues, and access um, for children and adolescents. Hello, I'm Shauna Sullivan. I'm the Child and Family Counseling Training Supervisor uh, for our Therapist Fellowship Program, which is a new program here at Children's where we are really working hard to improve access for kids and families in Wisconsin by training more therapists and getting therapists ready to provide really quality care for children. Great, thank you both. Um, so I mentioned early on in our um, in my introduction that we recently launched our Shine Through campaign, which is intended to bring awareness to and begin to address the mental and behavior health challenges of Wisconsin kids. Shauna, can you talk exactly about what mental and behavior health means and why it's such an important issue for kids in our state? Absolutely. So mental health is kind of all aspects of our well-being. Um, it affects how we feel, how we feel, how we act, and it also determines how well we can be stressed and relate to others. It's important that every stage of life for kids and for adults. And in children, we often see signs that their mental health is struggling through their behavior and their body. Kids can't always tell us what they're worth, so they show us um, with their body. And it's up to us to respond to those behaviors in a way that's helpful and caring. So we know that kids who are nurtured and cared for by adults and their communities can be at their best and reach their full potential. But unfortunately, too often in Wisconsin, kids are struggling and they're struggling with really tough issues such as anxiety, depression, and experiencing traumatic events and stress that they can't cope with. In any given year, one in five kids will experience a mental health disorder and we know that in Wisconsin, children and teens are hospitalized for a mental health condition at four times the national rate. Great, thank you. Um, so certainly the, the mental and behavior health of our kids is a persistent and ongoing issue that needs our attention. In our current world and current environment with the global pandemic and the reality of school starting, starting up very shortly, there's a lot of uncertainty for adults, but for kids as well. Dr. Walzak, what are some of your concerns around back to school as it relates to this topic? 
Yeah, so I just want to recognize that prior to COVID-19 um, and the pandemic, the rates of childhood anxiety and depression were already on the rise. So we were already dealing with a mental health crisis in children and adolescents before the pandemic ever arrived. I think it's difficult to know what the long-term impact of COVID-19 will have on children and their mental health. And I think kind of more to come um, as this crisis continues. I think some kids are really resilient um, and COVID-19 has really had very little impact on them. Um, but for other kids, COVID-19, they, you know, they may be experiencing new challenges or uh, mental health concerns that they've never had before. So um, I think needless to say, COVID-19 is impacting everyone differently. Um, some of the challenges kids are currently facing because of the crisis and as we think about returning to school, these are things that parents want to keep in mind that their kids already ch you know, challenged with our social isolation. Um, obviously the disruption in schooling, I think there's still a lot of uncertainty about what how the school year is gonna play out. Um, parents are dealing with potential loss of employment, um, food insecurity, dealing with sick family members or friends, and I think the list goes on and on. So um, needless to say, again, children's daily lives have really changed. And I think families, children are dealing with challenges that they've never had to before. Um, so I, all of these stressors mean that kids and adolescents are gonna potentially be dealing with increased anxiety, depression, um, changes in sleep, changes in eating, um, potential mental health concerns that they've never again had to deal with before. And Dr. Walzak, I agree with you. And in addition to all the stresses you mentioned, we have a lot of kids and families who are becoming aware of or who are already struggling with injustice and inequality. And they may not feel safe in their communities. We know that social injustice impacts our mental health as well. It is a really tough time for Wisconsin families. Absolutely. So we know that this kind of conversation between parents and their kids and, and making that more prevalent is, is part of why we've launched as part of Shine Through, what we've called the Shine Through Pledge for a parent to take this pledge to talk to their kids about their mental health around the topic of going back to school. Um, but we know that's not always easy to do. In addition to some of the resources that we have on our Shine Through website, um, can either of you provide some suggestions to parents for when they look to have this conversation with their child, how they can have it and how they can broach that subject? Sure. I mean, there's, there's really no right or wrong way to have this conversation. It's about what works for you and your child. But you know, some helpful things to think about might be to kind of find the time of day that works best for your child and to try to do it away from screens. So put the phones away, put the electronic devices away and think about what's the best time of day for your child. So we know that for teenagers, um, we probably don't want to have a serious conversation early in the morning, right? And we know for younger kids at the end of the day, they're often really tired. So find what works for you and your child. And when you do have those conversations, be sure to have open-ended questions such as, how are you feeling? Uh, what's stressing you out right now? And what questions do you have for me? And when kids do answer those questions, know that it's okay to say, you know, I don't know what to do about that. I don't, I don't know. So how can we figure this out together? It often works best when we work with kids to find solution to their problems instead of solving them themselves. Um, I know as a parent myself, it's really tempting to try and fix things for our kids, but we know that kids learn best when the grown-ups in their life help and support them through difficult times. And when kids do talk, um, be sure to tell them and show them that you understand their feelings are real, even if you don't agree or if you don't understand. Um, give the message that I hear you, I see you, and I'm with you. Dustin, I wanted to add to just that I think it's important right now to be having this conversation about going back to school or not going back to school or how your child's feeling, even if you don't think that something's wrong. Um, I think it's just really important for everyone to be checking in with their kids right now about how they're doing, even if you think, oh, they're fine, everything seems fine, they're not showing any of those symptoms. It's just really an important conversation to be having right now. 
absolutely. And I think that can help even if your kid is having little to no issues right now and making them aware if they do start to feel a struggle or, or some challenges that their parent is open to having that dialogue and maybe making that conversation easier down the road by establishing that conversation right now. Um, so acknowledging that the experiences for kids might be very different based on what back to school looks like for them. Uh, can you both talk a little bit about what challenges you might expect kids to face, whether they're dealing with in-person instruction, virtual instruction, or a hybrid of the two? Yeah, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about in-person instruction. So if your child is returning to school in person, even if it's just for a short period of the day, um, some of the challenges that they're going to potentially experience are having to wear a mask um, or uh, you know, that's not necessarily true for the younger children all the time, but um, wearing a mask all day can be difficult. And so we want to see kids wearing that mask consistently, not touching the mask a lot um, in order to help with minimizing spread. Um, social distancing. So again, a lot of schools are going to encourage that um, the students social distance. And obviously, I think, you know, Shauna was talking about teens um, earlier, and um, as well as young children, that that's going to be difficult for them. Um, I think the way that kids connect with other children, their friends at school is also going to look different because of social distancing. And because a lot of kids have not seen their friends um, for quite some time. And so there is gonna be that reconnection period. Um, for kids who have maybe experienced bullying as well, um, they're gonna now have to cope with potentially, um, you know, they maybe did not experience any bullying for the past few months while they were at home or where they were more socially isolated and now having to deal with um, that stressor again um, is going to, again, be another challenge. And then I think, too, just we want to really be aware that all of these new changes in the school environment can cause increased stress, increased anxiety, um, and just general, I think, sadness for um, just the way school looks different this year. I think parents, kids, it's okay to feel sad, to feel anxious that things don't look the way they did. I think that's really normal to feel that way right now. Absolutely. Shauna, can you talk a little bit about the, the virtual or hybrid models and what yes. kids might struggle with? Yes, absolutely. So I think in the virtual or the hybrid learning environment, there's a lot of new challenges, right? This is new for many parents and for, for many of us really spending so much time on a screen during the course of the day. But you know that for kids, for all kids, really, but particularly for younger kids, attention has been very challenging. So just like in class, it's really hard to keep kids in one place for too long. And kids and teenagers need to move about and explore the world, and that's a challenge for remote learning. And as Dr. Walzak was mentioning, um, you know, the lack of in-person contact with classmates, teachers, and even the activities that kids enjoy so much um, is something that's a challenge. If you think about, um, if you think back to our own childhood, how much we might have enjoyed recess or lunch or being in the playground or even just walking through the hallways in high school, um, that's, that's going to be a challenge for virtual and hybrid learning environments. And I know our teachers are working so hard to creatively meet those needs that kids have for social contact, but it's, it's really tough. So for families finding themselves in the virtual learning environment, you know, think about really creating an area in your home um, and setting up an area that is specific to learning so that you can take breaks from that as well. Um, setting up a routine and providing opportunities for you and for your child to get up and move and definitely go outside while we have good Wisconsin weather, right? So based on your child's age, um, think about what works for you and what works for you as a parent who's also suddenly placed in the role of teacher. Um, and parents remember also to give yourself a break. If something's not working in the virtual or hybrid learning environment, um, work with those teachers, reach out to them and keep trying until you do figure out what works. Great. So we've kind of alluded to this a bit in a lot of our conversations so far, but I want to say it directly and have one of you kind of confirm it and put it out there. But mental and behavior health affects kids of all ages, correct? Yes, definitely. 
I mean, kids at different ages might deal with things differently or have different struggles, but we should be aware that mental health is an important part of overall health. And we know that even babies have mental health needs and their mental health is often really connected to how well their caregivers are doing. And we have a lot of stressed out caregivers and parents right now. Um, you know, young children react when the adults in their lives are stressed out and having trouble coping. And that's why at Children's, we do provide services to young children and their caregivers through our early childhood mental health programs. Okay. So for parents that are unsure of whether or not their kids are struggling, can you help them understand some signs that they might be able to look for in actions or, or things that their kids are doing? Right. Again, it looks different for every child and every family, but I really believe that parents know their kids the best. Um, sometimes that younger kids might need extra help is, is really any behavioral change that's out of the ordinary for that child. Um, that might look like being extra clingy or not wanting to, to say goodbye or leave home or caregivers. Um, it might look like changes in their toileting or difficulties with eating or their appetite or even getting restful sleep at night. Um, there's a, a array of symptoms that young ch kids can kind of present with that, that make it really difficult. And as we talked about earlier, the younger the child, you know, the harder it is for them to tell us, they often kind of show us with their behaviors and their bodies. And then for teenagers um, and adolescents, some things that we're going to want to be looking for are sustained changes in their mood. So what that really means is that, you know, my my child's typically in a pretty good mood and, and they just seem out of character or like something is off to you. They may be sad more often or irritable more often. Um, avoiding friends, losing interest in activities, changes in eating, changes in sleep. Um, so again, and with those types of things, they're either sleeping a lot more than they normally do or they're not sleeping at all. Um, they're eating significantly more than they normally do or they've really, their appetite has seemed they're just not eating a lot. Um, not having any motivation to do things that they once really enjoyed. Um, then more serious things too, so self-harm um, like cutting or picking. Um, as well as your child potentially expressing thoughts of wanting to hurt themselves or hurt others. Um, those would all really be things that we want to be looking for and listening for um, in teenagers. Okay. So we've talked about some ideas and suggestions for parents looking to take our Shine Through Pledge on how they can have that conversation with their child about mental and behavior health around the topic of back to school. But I'm hoping that one of you can share some more general perspective on having an open dialogue with family around the topics of mental and behavior health, even outside of the back to school season. Yeah, so I think it's just important right now to acknowledge that, again, there is uncertainty. I think things are um, really, there's just a lot of unknowns. And so, I think it's safe to say that many people are very stressed right now. So acknowledging that that's how you may feel, um, acknowledging that your child may, might also be feeling that way, and then normalizing those feelings is really important. And it's a really powerful thing to do. Um, you know, when we talk about talking with children about their feelings, um, talking about going back to school, I think it's important for parents to also share their own feelings um, about how they feel. How do they feel about the pandemic or how do they feel about not being able to do activities that they really enjoy? Um, because that really models for children how um, you know, parents are role models for their children, for their children and that... Um, parent talking about their feeling really models that for their child um, and shows child how they maybe cope with their feelings or difficult situations. So um, I also really want to call out that it's important for parents to set reasonable expectations for themselves right now. This is a heavy lift. Um, parents are working, parents are at home teaching, um, parents are parenting, that it's a lot. And so I think have reasonable expectations. It's not going to be perfect. Um, 
and give yourself some grace. If, if the day is not going well with teaching and working and cooking and all of those things that busy parents are doing, take a moment, take a, a time out for yourself, do some deep breathing or whatever self-care you need to, um, and pick back up the next day or pick back up later in the day. But I really want to give parents the space to be stressed um, and to um, vulnerable right now. Absolutely. So with our, our focus here on children's mental and behavior health and really coming off of the message you just conveyed, um, can one of you talk about some of the resources available to parents when it comes to helping them deal with and, and manage their, their children's mental and behavior health? Yes, absolutely. Um, one of the best resources that parents have is their pediatrician. They're really the best resource for not just physical health needs, but also mental health needs as well in terms of figuring out the best plan for your child. So we always recommend to start with your pediatrician. Um, they're often the provider that knows your child the best. And if your child is in crisis, you know, don't be afraid to reach out for emergency care. Um, unfortunately, as Dr. Walczak was saying earlier, we know um, that suicide is the second leading cause of death among teens in Wisconsin. And it's, it's a really serious issue. Um, if your child is experiencing suicidal thoughts or behaviors that are worrying you, don't be afraid to reach out and access an emergency room or call 911 or a crisis resource, um, such as the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. And, you know, parents, don't be afraid to ask your kids directly about suicide. You might have to practice with other parents or with your friends, um, but it's really important that we ask directly because it shows that you care and that you're listening. Sometimes kids are afraid to come to parents when they're having a crisis. They're afraid of getting in trouble. They're afraid of what their parents might think. They're afraid of what their friends might think. And mental health, unfortunately, carries a stigma meaning with it, meaning, you know, sometimes we see people in a negative way because of their mental health struggles. So it's especially hard for kids to talk about, and it's, it's hard for parents to talk about too. We do have a number of resources on our Shine Through website um, that are also really helpful in figuring out how to get connected to mental health care. Um, but I think the best thing to kind of remember is not to be afraid to reach out. As Jenny, um, Dr. Waldeck was saying, um, this is just a really trying time for all of our kids and families. And it's really important to connect and get the help that you need. And I just want to piggyback again for the adults out there, for parents, caregivers. Um, again, if you are questioning your own mental health or struggling yourself, um, I would encourage you to reach out to your primary care doctor. Um, and even some of our resources on Shine Through and the Children's Wisconsin webpage, some of the hotlines um, and mental health resources on there are not just specific to children. So um, even this National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, um, this is it for children and adults, children, adolescents, and adults. So um, there are resources out there. There is help out there um, if you need it. Great. Thank you so Thank you both so much. Uh, so we did get a question from the audience that we're going to put up on the screen right now. Um, so specifically, should educators provide hard copies of lessons to help minimi minimize screen time uh, for kids as they're going through the school year if they're doing um, virtual learning? So, I, I, Shauna, I'm happy to kind of give my thoughts and then if you want to piggyback. I, so I think that we're really limited right now by what school districts are able to provide. Um, not everyone has the same access to resources. Um, not every, every child is going to be able to access those paper copies. So I think that as a parent, um, if you feel like paper copies would really be helpful for your child and would help to minim it would help to minimize screen time, I think that's ab absolutely appropriate to ask your um, school district, ask your teacher for. Um, screen time was a big thing that I talked about in March and April, right when um, everyone was home from the pandemic and there was a lot of screen time happening. I think that one way to balance this is if your child is on the screen a lot during the day for schooling, 
then look at other ways that you can minimize screen time during their free time. So um, instead of watching TV or continuing to be on the tablet right after their virtual learning is over, get outside, pull out the toys, read a book, color, do an art project, do something that does not involve screens so that you can feel like you have some control over it. But I think that as a parent too, if you really want those pa those paper copies, I absolutely think it would be appropriate for you to reach out to the teacher to ask about that. Absolutely, Dr. Wozniak, I agree with all of that. And I think it's just, the question is just a really good example of one way that you might think about what your individual child needs and um, reach out and talk to teachers and also ask teachers for other resources they have to supplement your child's learning that you might be able to print yourself at home. Um, the teachers that I know are really, really just wanting kids to learn and they're aware of all the challenges that we have and they're happy to help and happy to help find solutions for your child. Um, but I think that's an excellent question. Great. Uh, so that was the only question that we had from the audience at this time. But before I, I give my outro wrap up, I wanted to give you both an opportunity to share any parting closing words to our audience. Sure. I think I want to thank Dustin. I want to thank Children's Wisconsin for um, having me today just to talk more about uh, these really important issues that I know that are on parents' minds right now. Again, I think I want to give a heartfelt, um, you know, we are all in this together. And um, please, I encourage every parent, every child, please reach out if you're not sure. Um, if you need help or if something's going on with your child and you're just not sure, please reach out. We are here for you. There's resources in the community that are here for you. Um, you don't have to do this alone. Yes, absolutely, Dr. Walczak. I, I agree. Um, I think, you know, mental health in our community is really an ongoing conversation that we need to have. And I'm, I'm really happy to be here today to start this conversation. Uh, we know that, you know, in the next few months, we might be handed with a lot of surprises in the pandemic, right? And we might have to continue to adjust. Um, but learning in school um, shouldn't be a stressor for kids. And sometimes it is, and sometimes it can be a good stressor. Um, but we know that, uh, that we have lots of tools available to help kids um, be able to reduce that stress and overcome it and be resilient. Um, there's so much more we need to do for the mental health of children in Wisconsin and so much more that we can do. Um, the school year will be tough, but it also gives an opportunity for us to be there for our kids. So please parents, reach out if you need help. I want to, just like Dr. Walczak said, I'd like to really remind parents that you have to take care of yourself. And we know there is no manual for parenting during a pandemic, right? So it's okay to acknowledge how hard this is and that you're doing the best you can. So I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today and, and I'm, I'm glad to, to continue this conversation about mental health. Thank you. Absolutely. So thank you both so much. Um, I wanna thank you both Dr. Walczak and Shauna for joining me in this conversation. And as always, thank you to our audience for uh, joining us and, and watching this video. And I remind you, if you're watching this after it's been broadcast live, please still leave your questions and we will make sure to answer them. Um, at Children's Wisconsin, we believe caring for a child's mental and behavior health is just as important as caring for their physical health. So we're inviting you to help us shine through and light a path forward to better, better mental and behavior health for kids in our state. You can learn more about Shine Through, including how to take our Shine Through pledge to have a conversation with your child about their mental and behavior health before school begins at our website, which is shinethrough.childrenswi.org or you can just visit our homepage and there's a link to it there. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.